Hello, beautiful nature family. I'm here with another episode of Third Eye Prophets. Today, I got a very special guest called Trev Mental, T Mental. You changed your name recently, but Trev Mental now. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? First of all, I'm a Third Eye Prophet, just like yourself. <laughs> Um, but I'm a conscious hip hop artist and branding expert, and I'm just here to inspire people at a very deep level and learn from other people and channel beautiful creations from the heart that empower others to rise up and just claim like who we are, like remember who we are as humanity and just like remember that we are the ones we've been waiting for and like that's a message that i've been focusing on a lot lately but yeah i make uh heart-centered music hip-hop uh with a lot of wordplay and uh cool philosophical concepts that's amazing yeah i love your music so much like the house i'm sitting in right now i built myself and i was listening to your album like a lot <laughs> <laughs> while building this house like in the summer it's like you're one of the best word wizards or wordsmith or whatever you want to call it out there of at least up and coming conscious artists that I know of. Like, you got it, bro. <laughs> Thank you, bro. That's so beautiful that you like that influenced your creation of the home that you're in right now. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I totally anyone who's just watching now, like after this pod or during this pod, since you can pause it, like go check out Trev Mental, like success for me is one of the best songs you've ever made like it's really resonates with my heart i love listening to that it gives you pure motivation and taps you into the i am and the codes of moving from the i am ah oh, thank you bro <laughs> yeah that that one means a lot to me I'm really stoked for you to hear the <clears throat> the album the next single i'm releasing has congo on it that's dope and you dude you're just gonna freak out i already know <laughs> I actually wrote success like two years ago, so really? I've been on some other shit. <laughs> yeah, well, a year and a half, two years ago, yeah. That's dope as fuck. <laughs> I just have yeah, some man. simple questions that I usually ask everybody. It's like, what got you into music? What was your inspiration? Like, how did you get on this path? Was it just spirit or was it just something always there? So, yeah, I started listening to hip hop in like high school, mostly like Eminem and uh, some Nas and Pro Era. I'd listen to uh, funk volume like Dizzy Wright and like Underachievers and like Beast Coast. So that's kind of how it started. It was just like listening to that. And when I started getting into Beast Coast was when I was like, I was actually in a pretty dark place. Um I was selling a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have been selling and out of my shed and just like uh, trapping hardcore and it was just not good for me or anyone around me. And um, basically hip hop helped me like write my way out of that. Uh, I basically just started freestyling with homies in my shed, you know, smoking, hanging out. And then it... I just started realizing, oh shit, like this, what I'm talking about in, in my freestyles, like in what I'm writing down, they're actually creating my experience. And so I stop stopped like rapping about, you know, just the basic stuff and like started getting more conscious with it. And I went, I went through a breakup, which was actually really good for me because I was really heartbroken by it and was just like the story that I told to like protect my ego was like oh i'm just gonna like become the best fucking lyricist of all time and um like go in my own world and like when i come out of it she's gonna be like oh my god or like whatever that's how it kind of started and then like as i went into my own world i like really started going into spirituality and that's when i had like my spiritual awakening so hip-hop led me to spirituality and then through that i uh just discovered that you know, we are all the, the son of God. Um, and yeah, just hip hop has been my tool on channeling that. If I haven't, if I didn't have hip hop, I wouldn't have learned all the lessons that I've learned because it's helped me change my limiting beliefs through the words that I write. So that's kind of how it started. 
<laughs> that's amazing like and the artist you talk about getting you on the track usually is like it basically it's the same i also listened to this right was a huge influence when i was a kid under a shivers like one million percent like ak yeah. is a fucking beast like <laughs> oh yeah and it's like so funny i already knew that you fuck i think i already like we talked about it before but even if we didn't talk about it i would have known that you liked them <laughs> Everyone I meet lately, like even clients that I get on calls, like I'm always like, okay, how did you start music? Who are some of your influences? And it's always like, oh, like pro era, capital yeah. C's, underachievers. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I already could tell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, wave. It's, it's the psychedelic wave or a conscious wave, whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah. And it always starts like, I mean, for me in general, like, of course, all music is conscious all music is spiritual because rhythm vibration itself is spirit like it's all vibration and rhythm and frequencies so like any music you make where you tap into a frequency and you're moving it gets you into the now it gets you into the flow whatever you want to call it yeah i i think that <clears throat> the spoken word is the most powerful force in the universe next to love and when you combine that with the rhythm it creates movement for it. And so it continue, it like helps move it through your body and out your body and completely like change your frequency. Cause it's like when you combine a, I don't know if you've heard of like incantations probably. Um, but it's like basically the affirmation, like on a completely next level. So you take like a affirmation or a decree where you're like, I command this like in my body, right. I command this, um, and you combine that with the movement, like I love myself <laughs> or something like that, right? Um, and it's it helps it wire in your body and your DNA more when you combine like those affirmations with a movement. And so basically that's what we're doing with music. And especially when we get uh, songs caught in people's heads, that's so powerful because it's like that thought is just repeating and yeah. repeating. And if it's like the thought in your mind is like, oh, grab my gat in my back girl get smacked it's like <laughs> you don't want that in your head bro <laughs> neurolinguistic you know programming so, <laughs> yeah so that's we're trying to change that and uh very powerful for the uplifting of humanity 100 percent. music is so much and you can really look at it like the old school wave of like underground hip-hop like with tupac biggie and all of that they were all rapping that they're about to die soon and they died quite <laughs> they died quite quick from the spoken word even Snoop Dogg oh, goes in like a pod, I think it's with Joe Rogan, where he goes like, when I realized that my words become reality, I took a step back like, <laughs> and looked yeah. at the, what am I rapping? Like, what am I saying? Like, do I want wow, this to Snoop, happen? Snoop Dogg said that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, bro. I love that. And especially like when you're on stage and you're speaking it out, you're literally amplifying it in these speakers, the vibrations getting pushed and there's all these people singing along with you you create like this whole wave, bro. So I think live performance is also very powerful. For sure. Like music is so amazing. Like that's why I even make this podcast just to spread all the up and coming artists that are trying to use music to uplift humanity. Like it's so important. We're all a community and we're all one in the big picture. Like we're here to walk each other home and help each other, lift each other up as we make our own success. We bring everyone with us. Yeah, walking each other home, bro. Ram Das is a big part of my journey as well. And I think that's one of his quotes or maybe he got it from someone else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, walking each other home into love, man. And they say they say hip hop is so present, you can't unwrap it. <laughs> that's dope. But so that like, leads uh, me to the next. Oh, shit. I think my, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my computer is lagging for a moment give me a second uh, i'm sorry for this no worries i like your necklace bro thank you i just need i might cut this out later because i need to i just realized i haven't plugged the laptop because i'm a retard so one moment no worries Yeah. 
I thought I set up everything earlier today, but apparently I did not. You good. I'm good. You're basically just saying that what we were talking about was uh, leading you into your next question. Yeah. Uh, which I love asking people is just how did you get into the spiritual awakening? Like, was it just some something you heard? Was it your heart? Was it religion? Was it psychedelics? Just music? It was a combination of all those things, man. Um, when I really found my connection with God <clears throat> um, in a way where it's like, oh, this is God. This isn't just my mind coming up with spiritual jargon and philosophies. Like I'm making direct contact, uh, like literally knocking on heaven's door and communing with spirit. <clears throat> uh, it's bro. It started when I watched Lion King, bro. Cause I watched it when I kid when I was a kid and I loved it, but then I was going through like a I started taking psychedelics, you know, before I really knew what they what that it was gonna do, and then that kind of started leading me to a different realm of thought. And then I watched Lion King, and I was like, holy, like I get it now. Like we are the son of the King of Kings. We're we are the son of Mufasa. Like, and that whole story is so uh representative of the spiritual journey of awakening <clears throat> and you know even like him in the sky he's like remember who you are simba and then that part i was like wait what and then like i go and i started listening to that soundtrack every morning uh, i'd listen to that like remember who you are soundtrack by hans zimmer and uh i you know i'd maybe take a little uh microdose and meditate and <clears throat> Uh, just like, just pray, like with my heart, like with this devotion. And I just started getting results from that in, in a way where it's like, I felt more at ease. I felt more peaceful. I felt more blissful. Like when you're in contact with something beyond yourself, uh, it kind of gives you permission subconsciously to surrender more. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it happened for me. And like at the start, it was like uh, a spiritual awakening, but also like a health and wellness awakening. <clears throat> and my mornings were filled with like this super extensive morning routine. Um, like would get up and just like go into silent meditation. Then I do a gratitude meditation, go take a cold shower, go ground, get some sunlight. Uh, actually, norm I would normally go outside first thing and uh, just sit in the sun for like 20 minutes. And then, you know, get some movement in, some qigong, and then some gratitude journaling. And just like for a while, I kind of got like addicted to the growth of like morning routines. And so where I had like two hours morning routines every day. And that was a beautiful, blissful part of my life. Uh, things have changed a lot lately, though, to uh, be more efficient. But um, yeah, that's kind of how it started, bro. Is the Lion King vibes like, oh, I'm the son <laughs> of God. Like, let's go. I'm on this avatar on Earth. And you know, I started watching videos from Aaron Dowdy. I don't know if you know him, but um, he uh, <clears throat> he guides a lot of like heart meditations and stuff and talks about the spiritual awakening. And yeah, just learning through him. And then I started reading and then it's kind of history. So shout out Lion King. Shout out Hans Zimmer. <laughs> Lion King is fucking 10 out of 10 for that. A lot of Disney things in general are just... They got the message down of the inner child of the truth and all of that. Like Hakuna Matata is one of my favorite songs and phrases to till this day. Like if someone asked me like what what's enlightenment and is, of course enlightenment's beyond words if you're really gonna put it into words. But I'm like it's Hakuna Matata. You know what it means? Like they literally ask you like it means no worries <laughs> for the rest yeah. of your days. Yeah, and you know there's so much truth to that and. You know, it's hard because it's like I've the second part of my spiritual awakening was learning how to not like spiritually bypass. And I overcame like a lot of like my like a lot of naive 
perceptions uh, about life and almost like falsely optimistic. And I'm super stoked on humanity. You know what I'm saying? I, I love to tell the story of how awesome things are going and everything like that. But, you know, a lot of times there is worries and there is uh, and you, you sometimes got to honor that part of yourself because a lot of people don't know how to <clears throat> transmute the worries and they will suppress them instead. And so that leads to like spiritual bypassing and stuff. So that's like that been the second awakening is like overcoming that and just being in the world and yeah. like embracing all that comes with that. But yeah, I love Hakuna Matata. Like, cause really deep down when you're connected to God, there is no worries ever. Um, so yeah, that's a good one. And then like, as we were talking about like Disney movies, I don't know. Did you see the new one, Wish? No, I haven't seen Wish yet. Like, I saw you post something about it, like, and I yeah, yeah, we put it on the list. But I just found a cam version when we're on my streaming website, so I'm waiting for a, a proper one. <laughs> Dope. No, dude, that one is really up there next to Lion King. They have a song in there called "I'm a Star," and it's just like all these animals start. I don't want to spoil it, but all <laughs> these animals start singing, and like literally that song. <clears throat> it describes like the spiritual awakening and yeah, I think like Disney especially has a lot of messages in there. And I don't know if it's like, I think it's the creators at Disney that do that. Like they're connected to the magic, like they're connected to source, like maybe like the owners, like the higher ups, um, they're not or whatever. Maybe there's an agenda there who knows. Um, but what I do know is that there are some good people in Disney that are, <laughs> really inspiring people and inspired me like i have been blissed out the last two weeks just listening to the wish soundtrack yeah and uh yeah i'm really excited for you to see it bro to, so we can talk about it yeah that's dope like disney movies are dope i watch i don't know if it's disney but like ivan the lightfoot or something like a uh, pretty recent came like 2020 or something about really like he had a staff and it only works to do anything if he believes it right <laughs> it's all so symbolic and true bro like i love using just movies in general <clears throat> as not only like inspiration for the hero's journey uh in my own life but also to create from like how many ideas come up when you're watching movies and you know my brain lately has been like branding focused so like everything i look at i'm like oh what's the branding of this and it kind of gives you like some key insights into like the essence of the thing itself. And yeah, movies have been a powerful tool for like my lyricism. I'll like watch a movie like Lion King or something and I'll get super inspired and just make some lyrics based on some things that were said. Oh, this is my favorite quote from this movie or this is my favorite character. How do I like integrate that into my raps? And how do I take like what these, you know, seasoned uh, corporations have been doing and like turn it into a positive way uh, to integrate all my offerings into business and stuff so I think movies are a tool that go underrated 100% just like music like it it's there it's got the essence in it like that's how you create especially the ones that come from that pure like creative flow of being a child and having fun and joy like then it just comes out even if they consciously doing or not like that's just what life is what our expression is when you get it out there and one thing yeah. you were touching on that i like to go back to is like you talked about your second spiritual awakening and it's comes with a lot for me it comes with like internet spirituality when you read a lot of things on the internet and it becomes almost like wishful thinking and without action and you neglect a huge part of normal society and you just call it the matrix or whatever you yeah. don't want to do anything that the matrix does you don't want to support yeah. it you don't want to have anything to do with it for me what really like smacked my face was unconditional love and full trust in god in the present moment and then everything you're doing is service to god even yeah if you have to go work at mcdonald's <clears throat> and support something you don't want to support with a different yeah. attitude that can be exactly where you need to be yeah, life becomes a meditation, bro. And uh, we're, Ram Dass talks about how this is a curriculum. We're on Earth School. And so, yeah, uh, my homie Burnell Washburn, I don't know if you know of him, but he has a line that's like, 
I put my shoes on and step into the matrix, uh, testing all my patience or something like that. Um, but yeah, I love the attitude of just like <clears throat> waking up every day to embrace that. And like, if anything, the matrix needs the light, you know, it needs our, the light of our awareness. And, you know, I don't think that it's time for, uh, monks in caves right now. Like for so long, I wanted to almost like spiritually bypass, like, oh, I just matrix, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, I had this urge, like, I want to be this monk. Like, I want to, uh, <laughs> and it's like, obviously the desire to prevents it, you know, because you can't like become enlightened. It's like, you have to let go of the desire to even become enlightened. So it's like, that's kind of how it started. And then uh, I feel like now it's time to bring the cave out, like to make every day, every moment the cave uh, so we don't have to, because it's just like, what are you, what action are you taking if you're up? I mean, don't get me wrong. Prayer is action. Like taking prayer, like changing your vibration, like that is action. Because uh, you're making a choice to do it, right? It's like internal action. Uh, but yeah, we need a lot of external action right now. And we need people to step up and say, hey, we need to change this. Like this thing that's going on in the world is not of and this is a whole nother conversation. I feel like there's some things of the world that are not of spirit or not of God. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people will say, I don't know if you have this perspective that like everything is God. Um, and I, I believe that too. Like you can find God in, in anything, but also it's like, there's two sides to it where, you know, if your heart recoils at seeing something in the world, I think that that's a sign of like, Oh, this needs to be brought into the light of awareness and brought back into harmony with the one. Cause that's one thing about the matrix or whatever. Like uh, there's things that are going on in the world that are just not okay. Yeah. Right. For sure. And so like I, I had this whole perspective of after my first Aya journey of unconditional acceptance, radical acceptance for everything. Um, and I'll just describe that briefly. So I basically went into the Aya journey, like really scared because of my first one, like, and I just kept telling myself, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And as, after I drank the medicine, I was still like, it's okay. But then that voice I realized was like the aspect of myself that was divine mother. And I started turning into this female voice of like, it's okay. And as it kept saying that, I got deeper and deeper into the journey and after purging a lot and going through a lot of darkness, uh, I was basically shown the entire mandala of life, life and death, the whole, uh, wheel of samsara, the whole, uh, infinite yin yang, uh, mandala right in front of me with like everything. Like I saw yeah. everything and I just heard it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And I was like, Whoa. And it was just like this moment of just, holy shit, everything that's ever happened was meant to happen. Like it's all in perfect alignment. Like literally I'm on this beautiful timeline and it's like, it's already done. Like I can let go of like needing to take action and then like be like to try to do so much. And it was like this phase of like, oh, we're human beings, not human doings. Uh, but then my sex second spiritual awakening happened after I went through that. And that was like, oh, okay. So there's some shit that's unacceptable. <laughs> that's going on and you know you can you can still accept it when you basically do the prayer where it's like uh give me the strength and the courage to change the things i can and let go of the things that i can't and the wisdom to know the difference um so that's kind of like the balance between those two awakenings that i found and um but yeah i i think that right now it's like we're awakening into the throat chakra as humanity and that's like going out and speaking out, speaking the truth, like bringing awareness to the things that need to be uh, brought into awareness. <laughs> 100%. I agree with you. It's just, you can, it's a paradox. You can explain it that you accept it or just because you accept something doesn't mean you support it. Just because you accept yeah. that things are happening in the world doesn't mean, just because you're not suffering it doesn't mean you don't agree with it. For me, it goes like, if you want to be, in the matrix and of course what you're talking about being and doing some people get stuck at being but once you actually master being you're the master of doing too so it, it comes with it of going back to your natural state for me it's like a part if you want to 
reach how to control your mind, you first have to let go of your mind. And then right. the second thing for me is like, all I really want, my goals with this YouTube channels, with this podcast, more than just spreading the music, helping everyone in that, is I'm saving up money to buy properties all over the world. And then I'm giving that back to everyone as close to nature as possible. Everyone's welcome to build whatever they want, earth ships. I'm just going to buy big properties and make alternatives to society. Because society, right. what we're living in, that we're talking about, that is a little bit unacceptable and doing evil things. Instead of fighting fire with fire, we just make better alternatives. And that right. would take going back to nature, buying properties, becoming self-sustainable. So we don't need to burn down Babylon. We can just yeah. leave Babylon. That's the big yeah. goal for me. Yeah, so it's not about, you know destroying the old systems it's building new ones so the old ones become obsolete exactly and i 100 percent agree with that and i think that starts with consciousness you know because not everybody's down to just up and go create a new way of living but it's like the way that we can do that is by just leading by example and embodying the consciousness and the energy of that of that new earth and as woo woo as it sounds that's the only way that it will come because people have to realize internally, like people have to make the decision on their own to come into harmony with, with source. Um, and, you know, we can't take that away from them. It's like the whole free will thing. So um, <clears throat> we can give people land back, but if they don't have the same values and consciousness of unity and peace and love and um, abundance, especially uh, then they're just going to build the same shit that we have in the matrix. So, um, yeah, I think that the consciousness and the education is huge right now too. And I love that, bro. That's, that's totally my mission as well. Uh, I want to build a health and wellness sanctuary for artists to start off. And, uh, basically, you know, <clears throat> it's so hard to, when you're in the matrix, when you're in the city, it's challenging to get every, uh, health and wellness, thing that you need like it's hard to live in a city and get like the sunlight and the earth and the the ice bath that you may need you know the sauna um i have to drive like 30 minutes to even get to nature yeah so it's like i think we need that daily like nature is the ultimate sound bath sound therapy um frequency therapy so i want to create a place that's like very easily accessible for artists to create and spread that consciousness, spread that energy from that state. And, you know, it's been challenging to get into this state while I'm in the city hmm. of like full consciousness um, or just like awakened consciousness. You know, there's a lot of things pulling my distractions, but um, I think that that would make it easier for people. So I think we have the same mission, bro. And we really need to, I think permaculture is huge, you know, educating people on, how this system can work and like how how humanity's done it like before we created these large cities and industries and stuff to try to like prioritize efficiency over everything else like um over quality of life you know profit over environment and exactly. i think we're being the change bro so i 100%. commend you for that yeah that's you hit it you hit the nail on the head like that's perfect and for me one of the biggest things that you're doing with your music and like this podcast and all my YouTube channels about also the pre steps to coming to the land. So everybody are on the same vibration, at least the souls that shows to be the start of the new earth in those ways is to realize that we're the creator and or co creator, whatever, how humble you want to put that and dissolve the barrier between inside and outside and take responsibility for our thoughts and feelings that they are actually creating reality, your imagination, your thoughts that you have about your beliefs, your core beliefs are constantly being reflected out as the world you perceive as. You are the world. And that consciousness, I feel we, everybody got to realize before we go make the mess out of another place. Like, Because if everybody is in that vibration, it's like we're one big, big consciousness that's just enjoying itself, playing with itself in many forms and knowing that it's not anyone's competition is not this against that we're all on 
one equal plane of being. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always like my philosophy has come down to it seems like we're all in. It's like we are all the same being living each other's lives right now right people talk about past lives but i think that all of time and space is like happening right now um and you know it's it's not really that i think that it's that i've experienced that awareness and that consciousness and i uh, went deep into hoponopono uh, i think you've probably heard of that have you heard of hoponopono not really no <clears throat> so it's like uh the main healing modality and way of life that uh, comes from Hawaii. Yeah. So it's like the, it has the Aloha spirit, uh, which is influenced by, you know, Christianity um, because, you know, the white people came to Hawaii and, you know, it wasn't all bad. Like they did kind of mess up their ecosystem by bringing pigs and stuff. And they're still having problems with that. And, you know, obviously, America's taken over Hawaii without their consent. Um, and so Hawaii is still trying to uh, gain their sovereignty uh, in a peaceful way. They're actually like the first country that has been like integrated into another country or like the first, uh, how do I describe this, civilization that uh, against their will was brought into a country uh, with no violence so like they didn't they never agreed to it but there was also just all across the board no violence when america took over hawaii <clears throat> and so they're still trying to gain their sovereignty but the essence of hoponopono which is influenced by christ consciousness is essentially that we can heal others by healing ourselves uh, and that's the only way to actually do anything to heal anybody else. And it's not like we're healing other people. It's like we're helping them heal, right? But it's like you say, it's all a reflection. And, you know, the macrocosm is in the microcosm just as much as the microcosm is in the macrocosm. And so the essence of Ho'oponopono is that we are way more valuable or more powerful than we think. And that we have, I kind of see it in a way where, we are all like individually swimming through infinite timelines and based on what we're thinking, what we're feeling and how we're acting, we are like aligning with different timelines. So like <clears throat> this conversation could have went another way and that's like a whole different reality. It's like the butterfly effect. Right. <clears throat> and you know, this is like backed up with quantum physics and uh, backed up with like even science is catching up with this, but yeah, Ho'oponopono is, is is a healing modality where you can heal through gratitude and love. So it's making what's right more right. Um, and when we appreciate things, that's that's the frequency of love. And that frequency is healing. And even just having feelings about something is affecting that thing on a quantum level. And so when you change your story about other people, you change your story that you're telling about yourself. Um <clears throat> And you can change the story that you're telling about the world. And in my opinion, uh, I think that we are choosing our timeline based on the stories that we tell about humanity and about other people and about ourselves. And Ho'oponopono is a way that we can really use that knowledge of frequency in the quantum realm uh, to bring it all back into harmony with source and it's just through love and gratitude so i'll even like bless my space like a lot of people use sage and stuff i really love sage <clears throat> i feel very connected with uh, native american culture uh, obviously you know it's been there are things like cultural appropriation and stuff but i i feel connection with the spirit of sage uh, but also another way that i bless my space is just saying I love you and thank you like into like maybe there's a dark corner of my room or something that like doesn't ever get any attention or love I'm like what energies could be lurking there you know so I'm like I love you thank you and it's just turning your whole world uh transmuting everything through gratitude and love 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Like to add on about that, it's like for me, it's like using your imagination to serve yourself. The concept you have of yourself, the way you think of yourself, basically leads how you think of others and how you think of the world and how you manifest the world. I almost see it as like this plane of duality of form that we're in right now. Creation is already finished. Omnipresent spirit may already made infinite timelines how you want to create your life. And we choose through our imagination which part of this infinite to play in in this time and space that we're living in right now. So your imagination is completely free. Like if creation is already finished, all happened now, then you can basically choose to destroy your life with imagination. You can choose to ruin people's life, rob people, whatever. Or you could choose to use your imagination like whoever you see, you support them, you love them. You think the best of yourself. I'm capable of anything. I'm capable of changing any habit at any moment and just using thoughts like this is so powerful. Yeah. And it's basically what you're talking about in that it's just so many different ways to explain it. But once you've experienced it, it becomes so clear. Yeah. And that kind of brings us back to the power of the spoken word. And uh, I'll just be sitting with a homie just talking and I have a lot of homies like from high school and stuff that look up to me because of like the route I've taken with business and spirituality and just like having a social presence online and uh, end up hanging out with these people and they're telling me about all their problems. And I'm just like, if you say so, <laughs> like they're like, this person's like this, like this person's controlling or like this person, blah, blah, blah. And like there's real world to like tangible things like, oh yeah, you should draw boundaries. You should do this. But uh, rather than telling people what they should do, I just kind of hint at them like, hey, what you're saying is true because you're saying it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like people will say this, that, this and that. And I'm just like, if you say so, I understand. I can see how you would create that belief from that. And it's like honoring them, honoring them for feeling that way. But just like also with the language I'm using, like pointing out like you're creating this. Like, um, you know, I think that the spoken word is the tool for us to overcome victim mentality, which is basically limiting beliefs, limiting stories about ourselves and other people. Um, and yeah, I think that that's the easiest way for humanity to reprogram it all and heal is through the spoken word. Um, it's not as easy for a lot of people to just go into deep meditation and to going back and imagining, you know, their childhood trauma and like changing the meaning of it, doing all this stuff. It's like, if we can change the story, if we can feel the feeling and like allow the feeling and like in the feeling of it, it's released. Then we're free to choose a new story. Most people, they'll feel it. Like after a certain point, they'll feel their trauma and they'll like release it. But then their thoughts will bring it back because they still have the same stories as the traumatized version of themselves. So we have to like up, uh, upgrade our operating system after we heal, after we transmute trauma um, to fully heal or else, you know, those traumas are just going to keep recreating themselves. Um, and that's what I think that's the missing piece in healing generational trauma and generational curses of limiting beliefs. Yeah, for sure. But for me, like, of course, the spoken word is like, it's so powerful. It's everything. But we what we speak naturally about here for me starts in the mind. Like the stories we've realized, the realizations, the concepts that we've changed our thinking to are coming out of us now through our words quite naturally because we started thinking about it like, oh, this works. And like, like you said, I also love saying when people really complain and without neglecting their complaints or that things can actually be rough, you can be like, someone's like, oh, well, this sucks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because you said so. Like, that's up to you. Like, who chooses truly? Like, just a little hint. Like, who chooses if something is good or bad? Yeah. Pe people always go like, oh, me. And like, who chooses what you think? Who can change how you think? And then you, yeah. you're, you're the only one responsible. Not Jesus Christ in the Bible coming to save you. Not uh, Allah or anything like that. And all praise to God, the creator, whatever but you're your own savior and you have to take responsibility for your own consciousness. Mm. 
Yeah. We are the ones we've been waiting for, bro. Uh, and I think that radical responsibility and accountability is so important. And if everybody took that, then it would change the world forever. Uh, if we just thought about how our actions and our thoughts impacted other people and what cycles we're supporting. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. <laughs> take a big dose of lsd or anything and speak some words and you literally see your whole orc field and your taurus field and everything fly out of your mouth and affect the reality you're looking at and you'll be like oh i can see it <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> and it's like especially in meditation like you start getting to the more subtle realms and you can like notice how a thought like sometimes a thought has a color yeah and you start seeing it you're like wow um and kind of connecting to what we were talking about before, um, you get to a point where you realize that you're not the doer and like you're just observing it all happen. <laughs> and so there's two sides of it. It's like at one side, we got to take 100% responsibility for all of our actions. And then at a deeper layer, it's we are the awareness observing the actor in the movie of life. And when we separate our awareness from the mind and all the thoughts, it gives those space uh, to become, to, you know, be pure creation of, from the soul of what we really want to create, like what we give our attention to. Um, and yeah, I think it's funny because we had a conversation like, <clears throat> I think like a, a year, maybe two years ago. And I was really going through the phase of like embracing the matrix, stepping into the matrix and, um, like uh honoring my feelings like as a human and i was working really hard at my job um and i don't remember what post i made it was something about probably like hard work or uh suffering and like or you know something about how life is hard um because like there's a part of me that's like yeah fucking life sucks <laughs> like okay yeah there is <clears throat> not as a whole but it's like life is hard. Like you, there's there's a lot of suffering in this world, you know, and a lot of spiritual teachings and philosophies will agree with that. Like, you know, people create their own hell on earth, of course. Um, but there is like a just inevitable suffering, I think, um, in just being in the human form, uh, you know, just knowing that there are beings suffering at such high levels and feeling this compassion for them, um, you know, I had a vision of, I think there's one point in my life where like my car broke down. I lost my job a couple of years ago. It was all kind of crashing down. And instead of like, try to make a positive story out of it and be like, oh, this is all happening for a reason. I just like felt my higher self tell me like, no, you got to embrace this feeling. And so I was like, I started I went really deep into the feeling where I started seeing, you know, children dying, like things burning all over the world, like, you know, disease and chemical warfare, like all this shit that's like happening. And my heart just fucking breaks open, bro. Compassion. And like, it hurts, bro. You know, and just honoring that part of ourselves, um, transmuting that so we can uh, move to better stories. Cause it's like, when we were having that conversation and you were like, you were like on the vibe you were like no it's all it's all god it's all part of it like peace and love and i'm like i'm like no it's not peace and love <laughs> it's fucking you know because that's just where i was at and i knew you were right you know but i was uh really enjoying the experience of you know and still do uh the suffering and not just like the suffering on a global level but like my own suffering um basically what i'll do is my morning routine has gone from like the most high vibe, empowering morning routine to, to like, or inspiring morning routine to now it is basically taking action and being more empowered from that. So there's a concept called like eat the frog, which is like right when you wake up in the morning, uh, you do the thing that you least want to do first. <laughs> so it's like, if you got to make a call to someone or, you got to take a cold shower. You got to take a, a cold plunge or something. Do, if you do like the hardest thing possible and like put yourself into the suffering first thing, then the rest of the day is just like, ah, <laughs> like, so it's almost like if you embrace and accept and even jump into the suffering, life will bless you with 
with the with the grace and and the peace that comes from that but if we cling on to the peace cling on to the good you know cling on to enlightenment or whatever and we suppress those other emotions like life is going to slap us in the face with the suffering so i'd rather like you know get the suffering out of the way myself feel it all like go in the ice plunge fuck the morning sucks but then after it's like oh it's like your dopamine and it's like scientifically with like neuroscience like <clears throat> your dopamine levels they rise to that of someone who does cocaine or crack like because their dopamine levels go so high right yeah um but the problem with that is it goes high and then it goes way down like below yeah. the baseline and so but with the cool thing with the ice bath is it's like you're at the baseline and you slowly rise up to that same level over like a few hour period of time and then you slowly come back down to baseline but you don't go below baseline like you would with like crack or like some wax stuff you know so yeah that's been amazing for me and like also another benefit of that is like when i do the cold plunge first thing i do an ice bath first thing in the morning and i overcome that part of myself that really doesn't want to do it that's scared the little boy in me that doesn't want to do it um I can do anything the rest of the day. Like I can take any action. I could take that phone call easy. You know, like if there's any other things that are hard, like if you do the hardest thing first, then those, those things that were hard are just easy compared. You know what I'm saying? So it's really good at like building, boosting willpower. And so, yeah, kind of went through a phase in my life where I was just doing that day in, day out, suffering fucking, and it really improved me a lot. Like it really advanced my growth. It truly does, like uh, doing actions and things you think are hard is for sure, like breaking the mental construct that even think those things are hard, which is just another story in your mind, which you could tell differently. Like for me, the biggest thing, like no matter what is always, like no matter if you're identifying in the doing part of consciousness or in the being part of consciousness, is that everything's actually if you really look at it from a high level is happening for the highest good and everybody's doing the best they can from the present level of awareness that they have in those moments. And right. that, and when you get back home, it's like pure awareness loves and accepts everything. That's why we're allowed to play with suffering, why we have free will, why we can do horrible things, perform bad karma or bad karma, but horrible things that hurt others and not realize that it comes back to us. It's because, God, awareness, pure awareness, loves and accepts everything exactly as it is. That doesn't mean we need to stop there. It just means that's the realization for nirvana, to blow out the candle of suffering, to not be addicted to a story anymore in your head. And all of a sudden, you just are happy that you're breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah. Like, that's so simple. And that's one of my main messages that I always want to share with people, but it's beyond words. Because you kind of got to have your own direct experience of it. But many people peak it when they take high doses of psychedelics. They peak yeah. this like, oh, ego death. Well, my mind is silent. Holy shit. Like I'm one with everything. Everything's happening in the same moment. All is God. All is this one light dancing down into these forms, dancing with itself, with shadow and light. But then they come off the psychedelics and they're like, wait, I'm, I'm this name. I'm that. Like I still got to do this. I still got to do that. And that's where you have like the steps of yoga like one pointed concentration, meditation, yeah. ahimsa. And if you start taking these steps, all of a sudden, <laughs> one day, you're just naturally like, aha. Yeah, I'm not my thoughts, I can use them. They're my instrument. They're part of creation, they're part of co creation. But I am not that I'm this undying yeah. awareness. And you can like depending on how you see it yourself, but I see it that everyone is an eternal soul. Even if all is one, everything is God, God doesn't ever turn off the light because it's forever on. So your soul, individual image of God is always there. And once you realize that, your, your life just like it becomes so much more natural for me. Even if I have to do the things I least like in the world, I'm like, OK, I'm here. I'm now. This is what I got to do. Like we're in the matrix. So this is where we use the practices of like Hinduism, Aghori, where it's like every, everything, even nasty stuff, even horrible stuff, like it's all God. If you look yeah. for the light within it, 
you will see it. And when you are with awareness, even the worst situation with someone suffering and all of these things, you will just do your best to relieve suffering wherever you are to every living being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's cool because I, it's a, uh, you know, I'm into this like super discipline, like um, embracing the suffering, stepping out of your comfort zone. And a lot of the times what that means for me is like <clears throat> sitting an hour in meditation, like spiritual discipline, because, you know, that's that's one of the hardest things to do is sit. And just fucking sit like and just, you know, observe and challenge yourself to do nothing. So basically, I, I follow David Goggins, probably a lot of people watching this know who that is, but He's like this ex uh, Navy SEAL and like they call him the hardest mother on earth. <laughs> and uh, he he's huge on like the ice baths and like he goes on crazy runs every morning. That's his meditation, right? I feel like if he got challenged because, you know, he has he has a big. um, I don't even want to say ego, but like he's just like literally the hardest motherfucker on earth. Like if, if there's a challenge, he will do it like he'll run 100 miles. And break his legs while he's at it because like that's how committed he is to achieving that thing. If if he got challenged to like you couldn't sit in silence for for an hour. Bet bet that you can't, David Goggins. He would like take that as a challenge and <laughs> he would become like the next fucking monk. Cause I do believe that like uh, the next like whatever. Um <laughs> I believe that. You know, many uh, spiritual cultures, like there's layers of enlightenment and levels to it. And usually you won't achieve enlightenment until you spend a lot of time um, in meditation and uh, with a certain spiritual discipline. Um, obviously, enlightenment can happen spontaneously, of course. Uh, but it's like and it's like sometimes you're walking backwards because you're like meditating, putting all this effort in because of the desire to become enlightened. And then you finally get to a point where you're just meditating for the doing of it, because that's the truth, like of who you are. And then like enlightenment comes when you let go of all the desires or whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, I want to just set in the point that it's not just action that needs to be taken externally with movement, but we, <clears throat> the most important action that's needed right now is stillness. Like making the choice to take the action to be still. Because we need more souls that are connected to the higher part of themselves. And, you know, I would call that Christ consciousness when <clears throat> you're in the higher self. Yeah. And that's 100%. like, un but... yeah, that's like it takes right now. It's not about only being or whatever, like reaching, go sitting in the mountains, like you're saying. Like we're actually in a world where it's like we need more bodhisattvas if people watching who read what that is like people that actually realize the truth and then come and express it through the world through their daily normal chores and work if they have to like even going to your before you can have an ego identity and you're doing your job and you have a spiritual awakening and all of a sudden you're like fuck this job is the shit it's the worst it's so horrible and all of these things but then you when you actually wake up to the present moment it's like it doesn't matter it, that could be exactly where you need to be exactly where your meditation practice is because that's where you have to face everything that ticks you off that irritates you that brings up your attachments and then there for me it's like i have a lot of friends or that went to go to like what's it called vipassana or Vipa, vipassana meditation sit for 10 days in silence and then they come out and like, I fucking hate this fucking this work. I have to go to school and this and I'm just laughing. Like, <laughs> like, did you sit for 10 days to come and complain? Like, so for me, it's like yeah. once you really get it, it's like you exist to serve others. Right. You exist to be the love. God is love, at least in my book. Yeah. And when we're in love, yeah. we're with God. And when I'm in the most love in my life, is when I'm thinking of others first. When I'm thinking of how I want to help people, I want to love people, and like my natural reflex is just to be like, oh, how can I be of service? How can I help this situation? How can I bring this situation? And not like forcing it, just like a true, authentic, yeah. 
way of being like, I love you guys. I love this world. I'm going right. to do my best to serve it. I want to leave it a better place than when I came in. Yeah, it's a, it's almost like uh, more action can sometimes come from that place of oneness with spirit than otherwise. Because it's like, yeah, people will become like, will start spiritual bypassing and clinging on to the love and the light or whatever. But when you finally get it, like you say, it's just that's who you are. And you're just, you know, we're always the, the number one driver of Tony Robbins says this. He says the number one driver of human behavior is the need to stay consistent with how we view ourselves. And so when you view yourself as a person who is of service and you actually know who you are in spirit and you just act from that natural place, it's like you're going to get more done. Like you get low key, you get more done on a wide scale when you feel good than when you feel shitty. But there are some things that you need to get done that are not easy, um, that can be painful uh, in order to, you know, make changes on a bigger level. A hundred percent. I just want to add a final thing to this because a lot of misconceptions come from people thinking it would remove all pain and all suffering in an emotional level but for me what it really does is remove the identification of suffering it so you're actually just yeah. having the pure experience of these emotions right and you're not in a state of resistance to these things you're not oh shit did this happen in the past i gotta do this in the future and you're just experiencing it moment to moment and you allow all emotions to flow through you without grabbing yeah. everything you're just like a, a river because Otherwise, you're just creating another story in your mind about how spiritual you are or how you're this or all of these things when it's actually your natural state of being all the time. Yeah. But I, yeah, one, one thing also, I just wanted to say, like, these things are hard to put into words. It's great to speak about them with everybody. But what we really show it to people is when we are it in our daily lives. That's when we truly inspire. Yeah, and just by the way you breathe, you can change someone's life. Just the presence you hold. It's not about all the philosophies. It's not about all that. It's just like the consciousness of being present with someone. They can feel it. And like they'll, they have to meet you where you're at at that point. So I, I really love that and respect that. And um, I think that's a beautiful way to tie up that point. Yeah. And then I also want to get back into rapping because I don't remember what it's called in English, but you do a lot of vowel, what's it called? Vowel rhyming. And when you're not just rhyming like the ends of the words, you're just you're listening to the vowels, the starting rhymes and middle rhymes in, in Swedish called like vocal assonance and uh, whole assonance and half assonance when you're rhyming like different parts of the vowels of the of the words. Yeah. Yeah, so I basically, for the last five years, I've been, actually probably for the last seven years, I've been uh, just gathering the most powerful gems from studying all like the legends of hip hop and like, uh, really, it's been fun for me to dive into studying, why did this sound so dope? How did they do that right there? What's the mixing on that? You know, why is that line so good? <laughs> And just asking those questions has led to a treasure trove of gems um, that I basically ordered into a curriculum called Rhymes Cool. Like, Rhymes Cool. It's a homophone, right? <laughs> so uh, what you're talking about, I can't tell if – at first it seemed like you were talking about rhyme bending or slant rhymes, which is like rhyming something that doesn't rhyme, really. Uh, and then it seemed like you were – talking about like multi-syllabic rhymes yeah uh, or like internal rhymes so like an internal rhyme is a rhyme within the bar rather than at the end um and like a multiple there's like a multi-syllabic internal rhyme uh but yeah there's a lot of different aspects sometimes i'll just tell people that i'll just be like i'll just mention like an internal multi-syllabic rhyme bend and they're like like we're talking about some artist or something and I'm like, oh yeah, that was a sick internal multisyllabic right there. And they're like, what? <laughs> and that changes the whole way that they write. Like anybody who's watching right now, like that's a gem for you. Like I challenge you to go write something with 
uh, like five internal multisyllabics in it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, with Rhyme School, we really like help artists take it to that next level of lyricism because I believe that it's it's actually a science that is so so fun to get into and such a valuable skill too. And it makes the music like just pop more in your ear. It makes you feel like whoa! It like it just fits together perfectly. Like a typical person, like you, you know the words English, not my main language. I know the words for this better in Swedish, but it's like a typical person would rhyme words that just the two last letters rhyme. Like what you yeah. do when you're a kid, you're like cat hat. Yeah. And then when you start getting into it, you see that there's so many different ways to just rhyme words at the beginning of the words in the middle with the vowels and the consonants like and see that like holy shit this is poetry this is yeah. like that's the difference for me right now of the mainstream music of people that call themselves rappers haven't studied this they don't get yeah. this like for me when someone rhymes like that and i'm like ah nice they, they right. actually respect hip hop like they they got mm -hmm. it down in their core and doesn't mean you have to be the best at it just the recognition of the people that did it before us and led the way to where we are now yeah and in these days like you know anybody can blow up just saying some random shit on a song and having the right marketing strategies but yeah it's really different when you think about how powerful hip hop is and in order to spread that consciousness through music through hip hop <clears throat> we have to be skilled and when we develop our scale skills we can scale our business um and scale how many people we reach with this consciousness of whatever we're creating so <clears throat> along with that like i have to get off the call in a couple minutes but i just wanted to tell people about like what I do if they're like interested in furthering their career as an artist so obviously we do rhyme school we do like creativity calls and we have packages for coaching for that if you're really wanting to become one of the best lyricists of all time in a very short time period like no joke these are like industry secrets that not a lot of MCs will reveal because you know there is a lot of ego and and stuff uh in hip-hop of like oh I came up with this but it's really like it's all of our ideas like it's all none of them are ours you know they're all from source and so uh yeah just teaching people that i do the rhyme school and then the other thing i've been focusing on is the branding so for the last like three four years i've been taking countless courses on music marketing and branding and i decided to really focus on the branding and so that's why i call myself a brand specialist a branding expert uh because i help artists basically create the foundation for their career through their branding because uh, I think we deserve to be paid doing what we love and and be compensated for making this art that really changes the world like nothing can change your mood as fast as a song you know what I'm saying and and help you change the stories you tell so yeah I, I think that branding is the most important thing in any business in order to build trust so people will be willing to pay you and so, yeah, we help people get booked on shows and festivals and we build EPKs for people and really help people get their ducks in a row <clears throat> so they can be effective in their business and create a foundation within music that will last a lifetime. So uh, we, we're we actually, I don't know when you're releasing this, but we're having a, <laughs> you're like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> we're having a uh, artist activator call uh, we're actually doing every month where we just it's a free call we just give people a bunch of value on music marketing and music branding and bring them 25 plus years of experience i basically just drop a bunch of gems so anybody who's really wanting to be more sincere about their music careers we have that offering so tap in with me uh we'll put my uh information in the description and Sure. I just want to thank you, bro, for like giving the platform for that and like wanting to support the artists and put the word out there. And uh, just thank you to you and your whole audience for vibing so high and holding the space for the new earth, man. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate having you on and I will link whatever 
you want me to promote in the description everything will be down there all your links to your instagram your youtube your music spotify all of that and then i also just want to hear a little bit more about your album coming if i can just yeah this song with congo like and your album like do you have any hints of a name or anything or the the theme of it it's called we are oh. uh it's in all caps we are and uh basically just have so many different conscious artists on there i'm sure you're going to be on there i'll send you something for sure um like a, we have a huge cypher track with a bunch of people in the conscious hip-hop scene uh, with Congo, Aura the Prophet, um, recently connected with Pleiades, have a uh, song with him coming out. And um, yeah, the album is just about how we're the ones we've been waiting for. And, uh, you know, it's going from the I am to the we are. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, you go up in the cave in the Himalayas and it's like the I am, I am, right? The Om. Uh, but the way that we bring about the now earth is by embodying the we are and so it's a movement uh to bring us back to the i am basically i love that thank you so much for sharing the little hints about that so i'm so happy that we finally made this happen like i've also not been super on it recently on my youtube and i'm now getting on it like i'm connecting with all the artists i'm putting it out there i want to make a lot of episodes as much as possible and uh, Anything last you want to promote more than what you were saying earlier? I just, whatever you want to put out there. Yeah, so just, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Trev Mental Rap. We'll put it down below too, but uh, that's that's where I do promote a lot of my stuff, whatever it may be. And yeah, also on TikTok, I'm Trev Mental, so yeah, and we're going to be putting out a lot more content soon. We've been pretty steady with it, but we're taking it to the next level. So I'm really excited for you guys to be a part of the journey and for me to be a part of your journey. That's amazing. And when I'm putting out the podcast, I think almost instantly, I'm just going to see how long it actually went where I didn't find the charger, if I'm going to edit that out or not. And yeah. uh, I've seen your marketing really work recently, like everything with your reels with your videos and stuff like compared to before you were only having like 60 100 listeners on spotify per month and now it's like going up to the thousands so fucking big up yeah. bro you're doing it like i love it thank you bro i i uh, appreciate that i receive that so if you're happy with this i'm happy with this any last words it was awesome bro just Let's rise. Let's all rise together. Now's the time. It's all love. And let's emanate that. Yeah, let's truly be the change we want to see in the world. Like you said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are in this together. Let's let's make this place as the earth as good a place as we can before we leave this temple and go to the next journey somewhere in the cosmos. Mm. Aho, amen, brother. Om. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. All right, brother. Thank you all for I watching. Will. Thank you, Trev. Yes, sir. I'll tap in with you later, bro. Thank you for everything. Thank you, bro. Peace. Peace.